Hello and welcome to the Science Club Daily. I'm Tina and I'm joined once again by Ross Balch. Hello. Hey, so I've got an interesting story from France today for you. Uh, we've heard a story about flesh-eating flatworms from Argentina that has been going on a bit of a trip throughout Europe, actually. So these species of uh, predatory planarians, or flatworms, right, called, and here's the best part, they are called Obama Nungara, right? right? So of, let, let's start with them, the fact that they are not actually related to the presidential, can, uh, former U.S. President Barack Obama. Right. Obama here actually comes from a, a Brazilian name. So it originates from yeah. the word oba, which actually means leaf, mm -hmm. and ma, which means animal. So leaf nice. animal, right? Like a flatworm. Makes sense. So they've actually been discovered in the uh, gardens uh, in metropolitan France, but they actually originated from South America. So... This discovery was published by the National Museum of Natural History from Paris and in a paper, funnily enough, called Obama Chez Moi. I don't know if I butchered it in French, but yeah. what it means is that <laughs> Obama at my place, which again, which is amazing. I, yeah. just, I just love hilarious names for papers like this. So, yeah, anyway. there have been some good ones throughout the years, right? Absolutely. Like fantastic yeasts and where to find them oh. was a really funny one. That's my personal favorite, yeah. honestly. But yeah, I just hope more of those keep coming. So back to the little worms here. So how did worms from South America, from Argentina, get all the way to Europe? Right, that is the question because that, mm. I mean, that's a long way. That's a massive ocean. Yeah, it is a pretty big ocean, you so would think. So far as yeah. I know, soil dwelling worms don't swim. And I, I haven't heard stories of them having passports and taking flights across states. So. Next Pixar movie, right? <laughs> that is a good idea. We should pattern <laughs> that probably. Anyway, so these are actually nocturnal and soil dwelling creatures, as you've mentioned. Mm. But they've actually moved across due to the potted plant industry and the right. import of them. Yeah. So there's been like a lot of people have the house potted plants and it's a big trend nowadays. Yeah. Right? Although we don't wish we probably succulents and that, right? Succulents and things like that. So these worms are actually found within the soil of these potted plants and they also lay these really tiny black uh, cocoons, right? Mm. They are so small that you literally can't, you can miss them. But more importantly, within each cocoon, there's like multiple embryos. Right. So they proliferate at quite a fast rate, as you can yeah. imagine. So here, this is how fast it is. In this particular paper, Obama Shemois, because I like saying it, yeah. a, they actually collected a report over five years from all residents in metropolitan France who are basically just looking at their gardens and reporting the occurrence of species that happened there. Mm. So out of a thousand reports that were made, 530 of them was exclusively from Obama Nungara. Wow, so that's a really, that's really massively represented yes. in the population. Absolutely, and remember that this is an alien species that's been introduced, right? So this species has been reported for between the years of 2008 and 2017 to have spread to more than 12 European countries. So this includes the UK, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Switzerland, basically all the, all the countries on my bucket list to travel around Europe, basically. Yeah, like countries that all have a similar sort of temperate climate. That's a good point, actually. Yeah. So this particular species of flatworm doesn't actually survive in all the extreme climates. So they mm. need a very temperate, very moderate climate for it to survive. So, yeah. you know, it's a savvy traveler. What can I say? Yeah. Yeah. So how did, this how did this species proliferate so quickly? So being a foreign species, being introduced into a foreign land, the number one advantage that you have is that you do not have a natural predator. Right, like a lot of animals in Australia, I guess, um, like the, the cane toads that would came to feed on the cane beetle or... Yes, so the, and that's the that's problem. That pretty much is a good analogy for the introduction of species and what, how it can affect an environment, and yeah. which is why this particular story is of great importance as well. So on, on top of not having natural predators, I've also discussed about the cocoons just being impossibly hard to detect. So yeah. they actually slip past airport security and checks in distribution centers when they're distributing those spotted plants. Therefore, that's how they got into the gardens of these various countries. It makes sense, right? Because soil is really dark and has a lot of like mm. little rocks and stuff. And if these cocoons, obviously you're used to cocoons being white or silky. Hanging off leaves and right. it's just obvious to look at, isn't and it? If they're just yeah black and hanging out in the soil, I mean, there would, they wouldn't really be any contrast and yeah, you would just sort of wave it through, I guess. Absolutely. So, 
why is this a problem, right? So like going by the cane toad analogy, so the cane yeah. toad was introduced and they were for, what was it, cane beetles? Did yeah, you mention? yeah, I think so. Yeah. And what the side effect of what it ended up doing, it ended up uh, affecting the survivability of two species, if I remember. One of it was the quolls, is that how you say it? The, yeah. the small marsupials, and there was a lizard as well called guana or something like that. Even, yeah. um, you know, like if, uh, if, if, if your dog Mm -hmm. licks a cane toad, it can yep. actually be fatal to pets as well. So, so, so it, that has like a, a dangerous domestic implication as yeah. well. So in the case of Obama Nungara, it actually feeds off earthworms and snails. Right. Now, we know earthworms are actually fairly important, right? They, yeah. They're important to the the quality of the soil and just the structure of the soil as well, you know, yeah. just to keep your, even your plants and your gardens growing healthy as well. Even as food for birds and things, you know? Absolutely, yeah. So. Now the problem is, can we actually stop this from spreading? So here's the problem. Because of its many, many properties, mm. it has make it just hard to, to distinguish. So checks at airports and even distribution centers are basically impractical because mm. you, can't, you can't just see them, you know? It's yeah. just not obvious to pick out. The other issue is, is that there's actually no known chemicals that can actually used to be to combat them. Right. So we have no ways to filter them coming in yeah. and we have no way to kill them off while they're right here. So that is an issue, right? So it makes Absolutely. me wonder if something a little different, like say um, a viral or bacterial solution. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of um, a lot of these things will have bacterial viruses and like bacteria that infect them. Maybe yeah. that could work, but it seems yeah, like if there's really no easy way to screen and no chemicals that work, you know, like the classic yeah. ones like Roundup and stuff. Then yeah, well, apparently none of that works as well. So. It is, a, it is a big danger because if we can't control this and looking at how fast it's already spread, in a period of eight years, it's already hit 12 countries. Yeah. And in France alone, it, there's a thousand reported, uh, 530 rather, reported yeah, out of cases. A thousand, yeah. Out of a thousand, that's, a, that's more than 50%. Yeah. So this could potentially become a major issue throughout Europe, actually. It could compromise yeah. gardens everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah. Pretty interesting. I mean, obviously, gardeners are quite motivated, aren't they? By mm -hmm. Um, that you know, you see these people out every single weekend tending to the garden. Yeah. I wonder if that's motivation enough for like an industry to pop up around this. I hope so, certainly, because we need some way to control this before, you know, God forbid it spreads to Australia at some point. You know, we have a pretty big uh, potted plant community here, especially oh, yeah. in the local region. So, yeah. yeah, you know, hopefully we can find a, an issue, to, uh, a solution to this yeah. very soon. Hopefully we see it soon. Right.